Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day for Sunday, third Sunday of Easter. It is the 23rd day of April, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you well. The lake and started this evening, just returned just a few minutes ago from the circuit-wide youth group gathering down in Galesburg. It was a lot of fun. Thank you to our hosts. Uh, they had a well-planned evening, good food too. Uh, nice to see these uh, young men and women from a number of different congregations getting together and getting to know each other. This is the oh, third or fourth time they've interacted. We, we've been able to pull something like this off. We had a movie night in the middle of winter and then the lock-in out at Galesburg, and we'll have something coming up next month. I believe that's at uh, 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 in Milan at St. Matthew's. Um, again, I encourage uh, if you're a parent or a guardian or, or involved with the youth at church, uh, high school age youth or close enough there, thereabouts really encourage them to be a part of this uh first of all it's nice for them to get to know each other it's something to do and uh we 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 don't do any of these things without doing a little bit of catechesis a little bit of teaching about the faith and what we confess pastor somer did a wonderful job this evening um with with uh, handing over uh, some of the key points of the of the faith to these young men and women which we all need to hear over and over again so it was a very nice evening I uh, didn't get it, it was cold, so we didn't go outside much, but they had a very nice facility, a big gym, and we were able to uh, uh, just have some fun in that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And I'm going to turn tonight to the 79th Psalm. I will not sing it. I'll read it for you. Uh, it is a Psalm of Asaph, the 79th Psalm. O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of your servants to the birds of the heavens for food the flesh of your faithful to the beasts of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a taunt to our neighbors, mocked and derided by those around us. How long, O Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? For out your anger on the nations that do not know you, and on the kingdoms that do not call upon your name, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against our former do not remember against us our former iniquities. Let your compassion come speedily to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and atone for our sins, for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Let the avenging of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you. According to your great power, preserve those doomed to die. Return sevenfold into the lap of our neighbors, the taunts with which they have taunted you, O Lord. But we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, we do not know the circumstances. This, is, uh, this psalm does not have that kind of inscription. It just says, a psalm of Asaph. And uh, probably not the Asaph, um, probably a, a descendant of Asaph, or just somebody who's a, a, temple, a, a temple musician. Uh, um, anyway somebody from the school of Asaph, something like that. So this is a psalm of the group of Asaph, let's say it like that. And almost certainly this is written at the time of the Babylonian captivity. Now, we, this is a definite cry for deliverance from the hand of, of those enemies of God's people. But before we get to that, because it does come up sort of in passing in the psalm, well, why are they there? Why did this happen? Well, they ran after other gods. They, they, and, and whenever we do that, our forebears, our, our ancient forebears, things go unlock. It, it, death comes in. It, it, it has various forms of 
you know, they're, they're sacrificing their children to God Moloch. They are, uh, the, the, the temple is filled with trash. Occasionally you'd have a king that would try to reform and maybe be a little bit successful, but as soon as he died, one of his heirs would just, one of his heirs, not heirs, one of his heirs would take over and, and just go back and even become worse than uh, those who came before him, the wicked ones who came before him. And God all the while is sending prophets saying, just return to me. Just return. Remember what, what, what God, the things that God gives us are for our own good. You know, they're not, oh, I just you know, I want you to show how much you love me because you know, you're not having any fun you know, by stopping having fun. That's what people often think. The commandments, the law that God gives, bless us. And first of all, they're good. They come from God. And they hem us in, they protect us, they keep us safe, they make our communities much better uh, places to live, they make our lives much better. Um, and you can think your way through that, I've explained it before. Anyway, you know, God's commandments are good. And, and he is, you know, he is our groom. We are the bride of Christ. And constantly, he says, just look at me and trust in me to provide for you and care for you, to adorn you, to cherish you, as a groom does, should. And yet, you know, God's people, these people, went, and the word is whoring after other gods. It's harsh language, but that's scriptural language. They, they were unfaithful to their groom. And granted, yeah, you know, that's, that's our sinful selves. Everything can often look better than God. Uh, so we'll go to, to uh, anything that looks more attractive, uh, shinier, newer, and forget about our faithful groom, God. And that comes up in this psalm. How long, O Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? You know, every sin that we commit is a sin against the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. Because uh, everything else flows from a lack of trust in God. Uh, using his name in vain, not honoring a Sabbath day, like, you know, oh, this doesn't give you anything I can sleep in, whatever. Uh, not honoring the people he puts authority, authority over us, starting with our parents and then pastors as well. And, uh, uh, not gossiping, not swearing, not killing, not coveting, you know, all these things, uh, we, 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 when, we, when, we, when we commit them are, are, you know, a slap in the face of the thing God gives us that are good and holy. Think about coveting, which is internal, but what you're saying when you covet is, I'm not happy with what you've given me. I want more, you know, or I want something different. And that leads to stealing, murder, um, and, and gossip, you know, how we tear, it's horrible how we tear our neighbors down because they have something we don't, because they have gifts that we don't, instead of rejoicing in other people's gifts. And there are people who are always going to be greater at things than you or me. Uh, we each have our own unique gifts, and, and some don't appear to be great, but in God's eyes, they're all very great, because he needs you to do your, your thing, whether it's great or small. So, you know, the, the great thinkers of the world, the great, um, great musicians, great athletes, we can rejoice in those gifts that people have, knowing all the while that I don't have those, I have different ones, and God will care for me. It's a very Christian way to view that. We, we don't care that not everybody is equal and the same. We are equal in the eyes of God. We are all sinners, and we're all covered with the righteousness of God. But in this life, we have various stations and gifts. So anyway, when we covet, you know, it's just saying, and again, at least the gospel is just saying, I don't, whatever you have given me, the gifts my abilities, the material things, I want something else. I want something else. That's a lot of the problems that we're having in our world today stem from that right there. Anyway, God's people had embraced these sins, and he carried them off into captivity, warning them, warning them, warning them, return to me, return to me, return to me. And they would not. They killed his prophets, turned their back, and not everybody, but the righteous were often carried off with the wicked, or killed alongside the wicked. Now, they, of course, are in the arms of the Lord forever, like we soon will be, uh, waiting for the resurrection of the flesh. But still, you know, God meted out his punishment. And we see, as soon as that punishment is meted out, what do they do? They turn. Lord, help us. Lord, save us. They are focused now completely on the Lord. He's taken away, and he does this. He's taken away everything that they relied on. He's taken away their prostitutes. So now all they can do, it's a wonderful thing, is look at our groom. He does that in our lives, too. Takes away all the props that we lean on and uh, um, makes us realize that there's only always been him. 
So it's amazing, you know, uh, how very graphically the the psalm, the psalmist, Psalm of Asaph here, Psalm seventy nine talks about uh, the nations have come into your inheritance, this this land that God said, you know, I will give you this land, uh, the land flowing with milk and honey. They they defiled this temple, they've leveled it, to be rebuilt by Ezra and Nehemiah, and then later by Herod. They defiled it. A holy place. Imagine somebody coming into your church and defiling it, watching you you stand there, to make you stand outside where they destroy it, where they lever it, and mock you while they're doing it. You know, carry out the holy things, and, and use them for sport. Imagine how you would feel. And then the bodies of God's people are just strewn in the streets for the 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 birds that I was driving up from Galesburg, and of course, some must have been dead on the side of the road because there I saw a vulture swelling overhead, and three of them were down on the side of the road feasting. You know, the, the jackals come in, the, 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 if um, you've ever had a dead animal in your yard, it doesn't stay around very long. You know, usually it's gone the next day, someone carries it off. So, they're not even burying the dead. They're just, these people are just leveled and carried off into captivity. And no one to bury them, and they become a taunt. They're getting paraded through the streets, people are laughing at them and mocking them. You know, where's your God? Think about Jesus on the cross, same thing. You know, oh, if he's the son of God, let him come down. You know, it's us taunting God. Um... And then, again, the psalmist turns. Will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? And notice, um, when, when this psalmist cries out for mercy, he doesn't say, oh, we're, we're, we're repentant now. We're, 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 we've got this now. We, we're sorry, 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 sorry. You know, um, uh, He does say we're bought very low, but he says, let your compassion. Who are you, God? You're compassionate. You know, do this, save us for the glory of your name. We are God's people. His name is on us. You know, for your glory's sake, for your name's sake, Lord, do not forsake us. Don't let the nation say, well, what kind of God do they have? You know, he can't even uh, uh, you know, rescue his own people, even though they deserved it, even though we deserve it. Uh, and then at the end, you know, the, the psalmist does say, you know, you know revenge, you know, repay their taunts. And then we... Your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks forever. Uh, now that happens in Christ. He gives thanks forever in these heavenly beings that are on but Christ. And so in Christ we give thanks forever. But remember, our lives are very spotty about that. We should give thanks constantly for all the blessings he shows upon us. Very interesting and powerful psalm. These there's And there's a number of them, these psalms that talk about you know, what happens during the captivity. And uh, you see on the one side, God's saying, you know, I told you this was going to come, and I'm going to do this, so you now turn to me and call out to me and look to me. And when they find, when they do, even though it's brutal, they, uh, they you know, he says, yes, I'm here, and I do have compassion, and uh, I will rescue you for his name's sake. And that the name of his people will not be blotted out for because of his love and compassion. They're fascinating psalms, and they're troubling uh, uh, but anyway I guess that's all we'll say about that tonight let's uh, confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of god the father almighty from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy christian church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen lord now you let your servant go in peace your word has been fulfilled my own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, having received the gifts of your 
Christ today manifest and distribute among us in your church. May we have joy throughout the week. And we are indeed are your Easter people. And we are people of the resurrection. And may our faith bear fruit, uh, having been nourished by the blessed word and sacraments. Heavenly Father, strengthen us throughout this new week. Bless those who are crying out to you for healing. Especially this night, we continue to pray for Jason, Myron, um, for Dennis, Dave, Dawn, Ardo, Kloss, Roger, Dale, Liberty, Marlis, Dave, Anita, Bert, Heather, Joe, Phil, Dylan, Jeff, Josiah, Katie, Dee, John, Jason, Camden, Bob, Jim, Christy, Brad, Tom, Ashley, Paul, Scott, Amy, Clint, Eric, Deb, Beth, George, Don, Steve, Ronnie, and Jeremy. Place your hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your victory over death, and that as we have been joined with Christ through the waters of holy baptism, we indeed are people of the resurrection. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Between your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing uh, a hymn that's very fitting for when we think about that psalm, about even though um, there are often circumstances that we bring upon ourselves and we deserve, the great suffering we experience in this life, and, and also the suffering at the hands of others, and the hostility to, against church and the, and the tragedy that befalls us almost on a daily basis in the fallen world. It's a very comforting hymn times like that, 763, when peace like a river. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control. That Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. He lives, O oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sins not in part but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, it is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when our fate shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And that's 763.
With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.